right. That's what our next guest says when it comes to the mainstream media and the doom and gloom reporting of all those high gas prices. Dan Gaynor. There's so much oil floating around the world that you can practically swim in it. The question is whose hand is on the faucet. There's plenty of oil and gas out there if we had public policy to support the production of we more oil and gas. We have to stop pretending that this is some sort of a supply-demand uh, situation playing out here. So if we haven't had the apocalypse that the mainstream media have been telling about us. Now bear in mind that oil is different from other commodities. I think you have to understand that because it's absolutely essential for the functioning of modern industrial societies, especially in American society and the American economy because the United States consumes one-fourth of the world's oil every day. The United States uses 20 million barrels of oil every day and it is estimated that it will need 25 million barrels per day around 2020. While its own reserves are dwindling, the U.S. only produces 5 to 6 million barrels per day and imports almost three quarters of the oil it needs. With almost half used for fuel and the other half used for plastics and chemicals, oil is indispensable in every single aspect of our modern everyday lives. The world population has been able to increase over the course of one century from about one and a half billion to six and a half billion only because oil has allowed for more food to be grown and distributed than ever before. Food production is so dependent upon hydrocarbon energy. All commercial fertilizers are made out of natural gas, which produces ammonia. All pesticides are made out of oil. You drive an oil-powered machine to plow, you drive an oil-powered machine to plant, then you fertilize it with natural gas, uh, then you spray it with oil pesticides, then you harvest it uh, with an oil-powered vehicle, and you drive. the bottom line is that we eat 10 calories of hydrocarbon energy for every calorie of food consumed on the planet. At this point in time, no replacement for oil. Oil is the major source of the world's energy, and none of the other sources of energy. The present technology is capable of replacing oil in its pivotal role. trades of the day coming in in the oil ring and you can see oil is up 6230 uh, keep in mind it's gasoline where we've been seeing so much of the pressure nationally potentially we could have prices at four dollars a gallon at the pump over the next few weeks in some places too many of our oil fields are too old they're now too many are now in decline the Middle East is basically out of capacity there's some projects that are being worked on but most don't kind of hit the market until 2008 2009 and we're running out of time so way above sixty five dollars oh yeah yeah and you know there are a lot of countries around the world that in their finished products are charging consumers effectively close to three hundred dollars a barrel and they still use it could that ever happen here sure could three hundred dollars a barrel when. I don't know when, but it, it, it's still, I think the most important thing to realize is that, is that if demand is accelerating and there seems to be nothing on the horizon to slow down global oil demand and supply can't, then prices don't sort of stabilize at 10 cents a cup. Well, it's probably no surprise that the fighting in the Middle East has crude oil prices skyrocketing and investors pretty worried. Many are concerned the fighting will escalate. So are we in for a downward spiral until the fighting ends? And when it does, will the markets be able to spring back? I'm not somebody who thinks that going to war with Iraq for its oil was anywhere, anywhere A, in the administration's own mind, or be a real factor in the decision to, to go to war. Satellite imaging applied to oil exploration has confirmed a stark reality. With increasing consumption and diminishing reserves, the world is rapidly running out of oil. At the current rate of production, the West will be first to hit the zero mark by 2010. Eastern Europe and the former Soviet Union are next and due to run out by 2013. Asia will run dry in 2018. The reality, however, is that major conflicts are likely to erupt before any of these players actually runs out of oil. Uh, I think that it's a good thing that, you know, Iraq, if it's stabilized, if it becomes a decent government, uh, does have these reserves of oil. I'd rather have our oil coming from a country that's friendly to the West. 
When you call something a matter of national security, what you mean by that is that you're prepared to use military force to protect it when deemed necessary. And this has been made explicitly the case with respect to oil from the Persian Gulf, most famously in the Carter Doctrine, which was President Carter's State of the Union address on January 23, 1980, when he said that the oil flow from the Persian Gulf was a vital interest of the United States, and to protect that interest, we'll use any means necessary, including military force. I mean, if, if we look at it and we look at where the reserves are and how much really there is out there, it's a question really of control. Well, first of all, I think we need to address as many supply fixes as we can to stabilize supply. I don't think we will ever basically be able to, to create any significant growth in supply. And we have to start addressing the intensity of how we use energy, and particularly transportation, since that's 70% of the oil barrel. So I see a bunch of very large changes coming, uh, and if we make the changes right, we'll get through this fine. If we don't, it could really be a problem.